All right. There's an interesting article on 49er web zone, an NFL scout um, recently told NFL analyst network that Brock Purdy has yet to reach his ceiling and hinted at a bright future for Purdy saying, I can't say enough that Brock Purdy has so much more potential left to unlock. The analyst stated he already, he's already a superstar, but he's all, but he's nowhere close to his ceiling. If he ends up reaching a ceiling hall of fame is the least of the accolades that, that, that he has talent and ability to achieve. That is, I mean, I'm a fan of Brock Purdy, but hall of fame is the least. I mean, that's come on. That's lofty talk about Brock Purdy, but we haven't seen chase Brock Purdy even have one off season. He has gone to the NFC Championship game and now the Super Bowl. He has not had that time to just get stronger, get quicker, get more confident, get more sudden. I think there's a lot more there there. I don't know about what this guy's talking about, but what do you think? I mean, this almost kind of make kind of sh- makes you think about, you know, what is the future of Brock Purdy? Is he mad? There were people, Chase, that told me and you, I'm sure, You got the same messages I got that Brock Purdy couldn't improve from last year to this year that he had maxed out, which was lunacy. But here we are. He's a 24 year old quarterback. He's had an amazing couple first two years here. What is the upside potential for Brock Purdy? How good can Brock be? I think you make an excellent point in saying this is the first time and Kyle Shanahan talked about this at the NFL owners meetings last week that Brock Purdy is going to have a full off season to train to understand this offense, to work with his wide receivers, and to just continue to develop as a professional quarterback in this league. Year one, he was the third quarterback in camp behind Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance, so he didn't get a lot of snaps. And also, he was drafted, so his offseason was delayed because of that. And then last year, he literally didn't have an offseason. All it entailed was him rehabbing off the UCL injury and surgery that he had to undergo. And nobody thought that he was going to be ready for the start of training camp. Very few people thought that he was going to be ready for the start of the regular season. He was chucking the rock and slinging the pill day one of training camp last year. So I think that goes to show you just the dedication and the work ethic that he has. Brett Coleman is one of the OG NFL YouTubers on this platform, and he sat down for dinner a couple of weeks ago with some NFL quarterback mechanics coaches, and they said that Brock Purdy hasn't reached his ceiling yet, and they think that he can take yet another leap because they talked about his work ethic being obsessive, and he's possessed but trying to be great. And I think physically, maybe Brock Purdy is tapped out. There's not really much to build upon within that body, which is a little bit of a slight frame. But when do quarterbacks peak just in year two? Quarterbacks sometimes peak three, four, five years in, and then it can be a steady progression from there and a model of consistency. And you look at what Purdy did in 2023, people haven't put this into context enough outside of some of the real ones in the Bay Area and diehard Niner fans It's time we talk about how great Brock Purdy was in 2023. I think that people just don't give him the credit that he deserves because he's a little bit smaller and people are obsessed with these alien-like quarterbacks who have just ridiculous arm strength and great mobility. Ladies and gentlemen, Brock Purdy was number three in passing touchdowns last year. He was number one in yards per attempt at nine and a half. And if you want to tell me that he has a noodle arm or the system and the play calling and his weapons make him. Well, how about this? Deep ball completion rate was number one in the NFL at 55.3%. Wow. His pressured completion percentage was 63%. That's number four in the NFL. You want to talk about the processing? Those numbers speak to that. But how about this? His red zone completion rate, when the fuel gets condensed and the game moves a little bit quicker and you have to make very fast decisions, red zone completion rate, number two in the NFL, his true passer rating, 113.4, number one in the NFL, his QBR, number one in the NFL, EPA, a top all quarterbacks in the NFL. And how about this? His receiver target separation was 14th in the NFL. Patrick Mahomes, 
number one in the NFL. Now his receivers dropped a lot of footballs, but Brock Purdy had to display long ball accuracy, touch and accuracy deep downfield while having the 14th best separation. Kyle Shanahan schemes everybody open. Not according to the numbers. And then his deep ball catchable rate percentage was 61.7%, number one in the NFL. So I've been talking about this. Who's to say Brock Purdy can't get better in year three for his second full season as a starter in this league? I think that he can get better. Now, it's an interesting conversation to have when he gets paid 40 to $50 million inevitably if he has a 2024 like he had in 2023 and the Niners can't support him with as many weapons around him, are those numbers going to be the same? It's going to be difficult to do that, but can more experience maybe make up for that? I think the sky's the limit for Purdy. I think the only thing that could hold him back is him staying healthy because he does have a slighter frame. But him matched up with Kyle Shanahan, I think it could be a recipe for San Francisco to have a lot of success at that position and as a team. John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan call you into a meeting and they say, Chase, you've watched the Niners, you study the Niners. We want Brock to have a big, big year this year. What do we need to add to have him have a big year? Is it another running back that helps uh, you know, give them depth. Is it a, is it another res dynamic receiver? Is it a speed based receiver that creates space? Uh, is it an offensive lineman that somehow could step in at, at right guard or right tackle, maybe even center? Is it a second tight end? That's really intriguing for, I mean, we know how much he loves to throw the, to the tight end. What piece of the puzzle makes Brock more dynamic this year. I mean, you, you can draft a great offensive lineman, but if he's going to sit behind McKivitz this year, he's not going to make Purdy better this year. So what piece of the puzzle would, would you advise them to add to try to get Purdy that ring this year? Yeah, I got to sit down with Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch and say there were 11 pressures on Brock Purdy in the Super Bowl. Nine of them were unblocked. So Kyle Shanahan, I need you to do a better job with your protection schemes, and I need you to make some alterations in the pass game with how your offense pass blocks. And if you do that, Brock Purdy won't be running for his life like he was in the Super Bowl against Kansas City because Steve Spagnuolo got really creative with how to generate some of those pass rushes. So I'm asking Kyle Shanahan to take a long, deep, hard look at that. and then. You just have to get better along the offensive line. You can upgrade at center from Jake Brendel. You can get better at right guard from Spencer Burford and John Feliciano, although Feliciano is a very affordable option on a team that's a little bit cash-strapped, and you need to get better at right tackle. Because I just listed all of the numbers that Purdy was able to accomplish coming off elbow surgery. And now we're looking at a quarterback who is 17 and four as a starter. He's pretty much four and one in the NFL playoffs. If you take away the Eagles NFC championship game from year one to year two, his completion rate went up from 67.1% to 69.4. His touchdown interception ratio was 31 to 11 this past year. And his yards per attempt went up from 8.1 to 9.6. So he can improve and he will naturally, you would think with more experience and just becoming more acclimated with what the NFL game is but you need to do him help. You've done a great job in drafting and developing developing these weapons. George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. You, you got aggressive in trading for Christian McCaffrey, who was the MVP of this team this past year, and I thought that he should have gotten more MVP consideration as far as the NFL MVP conversation goes last year over Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott. You give him an offensive line, and you improve this defense a little bit, the only thing that can hold the Niners back from winning a Super Bowl is themselves. And I said this all last year. The only way that the Niners don't win a Super Bowl or make it to the Super Bowl is if they hold themselves back. And what did they do in the Super Bowl? They held themselves back.